What's up everyone, my name is Alex, I'm one of the co-founders of MyInvestingClub.com and I wanna let you guys know about something special we're doing for our viewers on YouTube. So the most common question we get asked is, you know, how do I start day trading? So what me and my mentor Bao did is we created a free two hour mentorship course for the brand new trader. It's gonna be available at MyInvestingClub.co. The link is gonna be right here. This is a free webinar that reveals our 12 secrets that every single brand new day trader should know before they start. I also wanna let you guys know about something that's very unique to MIC. So if you have any questions about trading or you're curious about trading or you don't know if MIC is the right fit for you, now you can text our head mentor, Tosh, whose number is gonna be right here, and he'll answer all the questions that you have in less than 24 hours. Thank you and enjoy the video. I have spoken. Who's got some questions for What's us? Boeing us doing? Questions. Can you tell me what Boeing's doing? Let's take a look. Dude, my freaking internet. At oh, home went, duh, fucking oh lows again. God. Fuck. By the it. fucking dick. I exited at I exited at 132. Jesus, I had a short dude. from 140 and I covered at 132 finally. And son of a bitch. I shorted this overnight. I woke up to this. Oh, sexy. Yeah, dude. I shorted. Goodness. I shorted. I shorted literally right here. End of day. I covered like all eight right here. Woo. I was like, that's a good day. <laughs> it gaps down and you wake up and you're like, huh. oh, fuck. I yes. was like, huh. think. I was yeah. like, oh, I like this cheese that I just found on the floor. <laughs> um, <laughs> right. Who, let's see, who's got I some- I like that right. suggestion are, that Christian had right there. Oh, Midtown, what's up, buddy? Nando. We're in the video it, it, library. They have the search tab. SVET nearing VWAP again. Let's take a look at this because I know a lot of people are watching this right now. I am not, I have VWAP not placed scout. one trade on this today, man. I'm not watching this shit today. Here's the thing. You got to think- it, it, Yeah, go ahead, Joe. Gino, you got to think about the timing that you're asking is, is it a long scalp? It's 3 p.m. market time, and even at the questions time, it was 2:50 in the it was three it was 2:50 in the afternoon, which is what we talk about zombie reversal time. That's when all these stocks die. Don't be long and shit that's dipping after 2 p.m. That, that is I was not just gonna say gonna that, guys. Work. You gotta know the time not gonna fucking that you work should in be long longing time. or the time you should be shorting. Dude, and I'm right, glad people right ask now those questions. Is not a time to look long. To What's that, Joe? Yeah, 100. percent I said, I'm glad, I'm glad those people asked those questions. I'm glad people asked those questions because I, I can't stress enough how important it is to ask the freaking question. Ask the question. No matter Dude, 100%. what you fear the outcome, ask the question. Every yeah, in time. fact, in fact, one of the reasons why, you know, I, and I'm not talking to anybody specific, but one of the reasons why you're not getting to your full potential is, dude, you're not reaching out. You're not asking the right questions. You're not sharing charts. You're not getting on the phone calls. You're not using your resources, man. Let's go to Tyler's like question. For brand new traders, do you have a video series on how to navigate setting up trading platforms? We do. Under, it's called setting up lines and we show how to do TOS. We show how to do DOS. And in <clears> Joe <throat> Kelly's trading basic series, we show you all that. That. so yes we do yeah if you just search like das in the library it'll pull up dos and if you search think or swim uh it'll pull up think or swims walkthroughs yep. tosh did like a fucking two hour walkthrough of think or swim in the beginning um, oh my god dude that was I like can't two remember years the name ago too i wonder if they changed it yeah yeah it was the, it's there uh i remember i did a i did a, a second part on the back end of it yeah look at that look at that Look at SBET now, the long, I mean, the, the dip is failing. That's a perfect example of a 2 p.m. reversal. Yep, this is a 2 p.m. reversal, man. Had I not been giving this webinar, I may have been tempted, it, I, if I had locates, to hit when it's coming up to this mountain range, this kind of topping formation. Because, dude, look at the time. This is the time of end-of-day give back. This is the time. Yeah, yep. I didn't have locates for this one, though. I was, too, I, was too, uh, I was too cheap early on, and it was a micro. So I was like, I probably won't. This is literally the only stock I didn't touch today, but whatever. See, what confuses me about SBET is when I looked in the filings, I saw a 4.4 million float. Ooh, but man, that's cheap. when when you look at <laughs> other sources, they say the floats like under five hundred thousand, and it's weird, man. Dude, it, it, who knows, man? Sometimes, sometimes yeah, I I literally knows. can't. Here's here's what I do if I'm not 
well versed on the fundamentals and I literally can't figure out what the flow is, dude, I'm going to watch price action and I'm going to assume, yep. I'm always going to assume it's a much lower float than I think I'm all, dude, let me say that again. If you Best are unfamiliar of, right of the float and you're a short bias trader, assume it's half of what it says or half of what you think always. <laughs> Listen to Tosh. She's like, that, that was a fucking nugget right there. I'm going to say it one more fucking time. Dude, Damn. retweet, <laughs> comment, <laughs> tweet. <laughs> he retweeted himself. He got I retweeted himself. myself. But here's the thing, Joe. Dude, I heard <laughs> Dow was saying this was like a 1 million float in the morning or what he thought on a quick analysis. I was like, dude, if it's 1 million, it's under 1 million. I was like, hey, exactly. Yeah, no, fuck, no way. So you fuck short that. lows, you chase, and you're like, dude, I'm in the money. This is going to do an offering. Then, boom. <laughs> then nope then nuke city man nagasaki and hiroshima right oh, here to man. shorts man you got to be careful bro is it a good idea to um add a horizontal line on 360 on s here let's take a look hell yeah dude you know why that is a total line and i'm gonna show you why this is what i look at all the time even if this is a little consolidation top i'm putting it and all this I would put a line right there. That's a, that's a clear resistance, man. The 360 line for sure. Look at how that lined up. It's like a triple top area. I love shit like that. I love shorting and stuff like that, dude. Yeah. Yeah. Great line, man. <laughs> Definitely yummy. Sorry. Let me look at it again. When's our psychology question? What's worse being overconfident or not confident at all? Oh, fuck. Both are equally terrible. Personally, I would say overconfident because someone that's not confident can still be a winner right but most people with like an ego or an overconfidence that the market has to do what they think it's going to do or the stock has to do what they think it's going to do nine times out of ten it's going to do exactly what you don't want it to fucking do and when you have that disconnect emotional that emotional disconnection that's when it's the best is when you could give a shit what the stock does, you have a plan in place and you have risk intact and you have targets and you have everything in place and it's a, it's a technical plan. There's very little that can go wrong. Dude, hundred percent. So I'll just chime in and say, you know, the, Whoa, here's the thing. That reclaim. Dude. Yeah. Right. Look at, look at this. Look at so that. here, here's the number one thing that I dealt with, which was my kryptonite, like on the Superman analogy or whatever, you know, just comic book here, but my kryptonite, my biggest flaw in trading has always been the overconfidence. So let me just kind of let you know the pros and cons of both. When you, first of all, you're in a game, you're, you're literally in a career or you're trying to be in a career that you have to gamble money. You have to bet money. So Scared money never makes money. That's, that's number one. So when you are not confident at all, never expect to make any money. But here's the thing. You're never going to end yourself with that kind of mentality. You're going to tread water for years. You may get in. You may have little wins. You're going to have little wins to treading water to very small progress if you're too fearful. But you're not usually running the chance of ending yourself overnight. That's where the overconfident comes in. This is the guy that has a run. And man, does he make 100 grand in a month. And then guess what? Gives back 200 the next month. So what's more dangerous on a monetary, you know, um, kind of subject. I think the overconfident every single time, because the small guy is just going to tread water while the overconfident is going to have such big swings that by the time he takes his third biggest swing, dude, he's fatigued out and he never wants to trade again because it's too emotional. He's breaking out on his face. He's aging overnight. The stress is killing his physical body. So dude, overconfidence never did anyone any fucking good in the markets, dude. Let me fucking tell you, dude. And I'm so passionate about that because that has always been my biggest hurdle. I would get on a green streak for 30 or 40 days. Then guess what? That 46th day, I would 10 times my size and give back a month of gains. Dude, every day is a new day. <clears throat> Come in humble. Overconfidence will destroy you anybody dude it would destroy yeah. bow or alex like nobody is yep. exempt from being overconfident woody's been trading i think nearly what two decades or something woody like dude he's a huge otc market trader and he would tell you the same thing man we talk about it <clears throat> and let me just clarify that and this is just a personal opinion again take it with a grain of salt is I think people confuse the difference between conviction and overconfidence. Overconfidence, this is just my opinion, overconfidence, like what Tosh said, 
is what fucking kills you. Conviction is not bad to have. Conviction to me is belief in your analysis. Overconfidence or over, you're overly convicted, that's the defying line. Because having conviction is simply just a firm belief in what you're doing. So every day we all have conviction in our process. Oh yeah. We all have conviction oh, yeah. in the MIC process. But if we have an overconfidence that it will work when it's telling us to get the fuck out, that is when we get destroyed. That is when it all turns to shit. Dude, preach, preach, and preach some mo. Dude, I love that so much, Joe, because like I know all the fundamental trolls will just fucking eye gouge us for what I'm about to say. But dude, it's not that you have conviction in the stock. You have conviction in the process, man. If it's your ideal exactly. setup, then obviously that's the one you throw more size. Obviously that's the one you hold longer. It's not conviction in, oh my God, this ticker, this ticker, this ticker, this. Dude, it's the daily process. It's the advantage and the edge that is presented to you in said ticker yep. in question. It's not the ticker, dude. Yep. It's the process. Yep. <laughs> All right, buddy. I'll catch you guys later. See you, Joe, man. Thank you so much for watching our video. If you want to see more of our videos, please subscribe to our YouTube channel by clicking the button here. We do our best to post a new video every single day. If you have any questions about MIC or any general trading questions, please text Tosh using the number here. Also, stay up to date by watching some of our most recent videos right over here.